Hello, hello and welcome back to a new Kubel Space Program video and as always with a nice lift off. However, today we are launching at sunrise. What a beautiful view to behold. Don't you guys agree? And this is exactly the reason why we're actually going to go through the launch in a bit more um, less speedy fashion. Not like in the previous, or just generally speaking, in most of my videos where we have the launch and then up until uh, main engine cutoff, approximately at four times the regular speed. So the launching sequence was, I think, just a tiny bit sped up, so just to compensate for the drop in performance, so approximately 110%, and now this section is around 150 ish or maybe 200, like two times. I'm not quite sure actually. But, anyways, we still have a very, very close hands-on approach in the launch itself and here you just saw the nice booster separation speaking of booster separation um, in today's mission we are going to Leith again like I promised in the previous episode where we went to Tyler, uh, to Tyler, oops that would be actually dual as well, no to Moho um, that we would um, still continue the small mini-series um, around the jewel, primarily focusing on Leith uh, in the next episode, so that's today's episode. And the other th small part that I actually wanted or want to touch upon is um, this rocket here. Certainly does resemble a bit the, the rocket from our previous episode to Moho, right? Because actually the lift stage is exactly the same. The only difference, which kind of is a bit disapp well, disappointing, as in. Uh, why I actually specifically mentioned this stage last time or last episode was because I really liked the looks of it, how the proportions were and so on and so forth, and that's actually the reason why I went with this stage again, however the fairing is this time very voluminous since we have a rather wide fe uh, payload, and this kind of detracts from the beauty of this rocket. So with the fairing being deployed, the booster stage, uh, the booster stage, the main stage dropped, and we are almost in orbit. Um, and we're back to the regular kind of format with four times or something um, uh, speed here. So because well, getting into orbit is just now a thing of burning at apoapsis until we have a nice periapsis, and then we just doing a maneuver to. I'm all the way out to Jewel, and then we're going to transfer to Jewel. However, since obviously Jewel transfers do require quite a lot of fuel, we're actually going to do, uh, so in already I think most video, I think, um, a staged burn. However, this time we're using, well, doing the first burn rather fast in the orbital insertion stage, and now at high orbit we can detach it and fire up those three small little um, SRBs on it in order to for it to deorbit itself. And by the way, I think those three SRBs are called might SRBs. Though please don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, so with that we got rid of the um, orbital stage, kind of that orbital insertion stage. It gave us this first initial kick. Of what was it? Around 900 ish meters per second into a high orbit around Kerbin. Now we're coming back down into, well, towards periapsis, aka the closest point um, to Kerbin, and firing up our low thrust nuclear engines. Still, we do have quite a um, solid amount of six nuclear engines, so we don't have a ridiculously low thrust weight ratio. Um, and we're just burning pro uh, maneuver node, primarily prograde, until we get a nice encounter with Jewel. Well, nice as in a first encounter. Now you can see on the left hand side of the screen ourselves burning in mid course, adjusting our intersect with Jewel so that we have a um, close encounter with the moons or and are in the same plane as Jewel. Now, as we just just reach the um, edge of the sphere of influence of Jewel, I did another maneuver to do a small correction burn, what was it, around 5 meters per second, to get a gravity capture from Tylo. And with that we are actually already in an orbit around Jewel, albeit a rather eccentric orbit. And since our kind of final goal is Tylo and we have a lot of fuel to spare, I might slightly over-engineered this stage, but almost like a Moho stage, um, I just went for a regular 
like brute, well not brute force, but just a deceleration burn and dual periapsis until we got a nice encounter with lathe, like um, in the same orbit for that matter. And then once we're at lathe, um, time acceleration, maximum, full engine thrust and going and grabbing a coffee. So that's what I did here. Um, um, what was it around? 1,800, 900, maybe just under 2,000 I think meters per second to slow ourselves down until we get captured by lathe and then continuing to um, just decelerate until we are in a proper orbit and then one small alignment burn and we'll radial uh, not radial uh, inclination changes like five degrees or something like that waiting until we are in at the correct position and selecting the lathe refueling rover as a target so this is actually like two weeks ago the mission from two weeks ago we went back to lathe and this is where we're going to land today's payload and I think you've seen it in the thumbnail the title and whatsoever and they haven't even touched upon it in the previous like in the first six minutes of our episode we are sending a helicopter to the surface of lathe um, yeah, I guess it's a bit too, too late with this large reveal, uh, especially after we've seen us already going through the atmosphere. Speaking about going through the atmosphere, um, we have a nice heat shield um, on the obviously the, the orbital the orbit stage, which kept us from overheating. Even though the heating would not have been that big of a deal, like we already established last two episodes ago, or just last time we were here. Nice retro rockets dropping the heat shield there. Once we throttled up a bit the um, rotor blades and we have actually two counter rotating rotors in order to reduce the um, torque that is being forced upon them so that we are not rotating like the, the, the helicopter itself is not rotating however we do have um, two reaction wheels at the rear end of the helicopter in order to compensate for other let's say just instability issues that we that might erase and here we are closing in for a nice beautiful landing right next to the um, refueling rover small side note um, I have bound to the throttle the accelerate um, kind of the spin rate of the rotors and on the right hand side you can see the the um, pitch angle of the rotor blades and with those pitch angles we are actually um, controlling our descent and or ascent depending on the pitch angle obviously or just how much lift the rotors or this one rotor um, which is shown produces and with that we can go up and down more or less. We are jumping to the Lathe Space Station. If you want to see the construction of this space station please go and check out the corresponding video there should be a link in the top right corner. And and um, at the space station, docked to the space station, we have a small SSTO that we sent there during one live stream. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell button to in order to not miss any well, post for any new content as well as live streams. Anyways, with this self promotion in the middle of the video done, which also is rather good, uh, we can just um, coast away using the RCS, flip our um, SSTO around, and start our the orbit burn in just a second. Um, so this is a kind of like the idea from the space plane. Obviously, um, is just to have the capabilities to ferry crew. From the surface of Lathe into well to the space station, and it was not necessary to directly from Kerbin all the way to Lathe. So as you can see here in the design, we do not have any um, nuclear engines, or actually, as a matter of fact, no engines except the rapier engines, which are brilliant for low. SSTOs, usually for low Kerbin SSTOs, since after going into orbit down you do not have that much fuel left and even if you do have some fuel left, or all the fuel that you do have left is liquid fuel and oxidizer and the rapiers do not have a particularly good efficiency, so yeah that's why mainly rapier only SSTOs are um, confined to low cube in orbit or maybe high cube in orbit but not really anything further anyways we're getting off topic here uh, and that's why 
this is um, okay actually why I was talking about that and this was sent here with the help of another craft and now however we do have without any problems the capabilities to go into low lathe orbit or from orbit from low lathe orbit down to the surface back and this is exactly what we're doing right now we have a nice like a regular I guess SSTO descent um, if you want to see more regular SS or just re re generally speaking more SSTOs but then Kerbin SSTOs um, go to the SSTO playlist on the channel there are a bunch of I think like 11 or 12 SSTO videos um, over there so there's definitely something you might find interesting so now we are approaching here our target as you can see here on the ridge line actually um, closer to us we're still rather fast so you start doing slowing down maneuvers and this is actually something I was a bit surprised um, in the beginning I was a bit careful with how aggressive to pitch up since I haven't used and flown this craft for whenever the live stream was and um, I, w I was not sure how stable it is on re-entry especially even though we do have some fuel I brought on purpose quite a lot more fuel down with us than actually was necessary because I was expecting to fly quite a while well I was thinking maybe we will need to fly to quite far um, and yes but now in retrospect we had way too much fuel uh, which kind of detracts from the entire point bringing this craft down well there are two points one point you'll see in a second and the other point is having the crew transport down here on the surface and speaking of the surface here we're approaching nice touchdown however well we are at a good approach but bouncy 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 we're bouncing four or five times up and down which is kind of um, meh, but it's still good that we um, touch down that far away from the actual target marker, so from the helicopter and the refueling rover. And now we could just barely get to a stop quite close to them, so we're just rolling over to them. By the way, if you haven't noticed, we have not used the engines throughout the entire descent, so it was all gliding, which is pretty good. Speaking of engines, igniting them for a short period just to get a bit closer to the refueling rover. And you guessed it right. The other more or less um, secondary reason for this SST for the SSU um, coming down here, apart from just having all crafts nice and close for a nice screenshot, um, is uh, and the crew transport capabilities is in order to refuel it because it was actually rather low in comparison. Um, to the, just generally speaking, the SSQ and the space station, both were... Okay. I actually checked them before des descending. We're not, not that low on fuel as I had in mind. Uh, but still, why not, let's refuel the craft fully. This is a good idea, or a good usage of our refueling rover. So we can use it as well. Speaking of refueling rover, I don't think we were able to see that however in between the well in between the recordings between the sessions where I kind of um, was looking around things and, uh, and preparing um, I actually figured or realized that the rover is really somehow after reloading or just jumping back to the rover after having it landed in the previous episode the wheels of the front ca um, front section are really bouncy and bugging and after some time they just pop and this was I was trying to solve this issue but this was just it's just some sort of bug so why am I saying that because if the there is something bugging around and you can see here the the two the plane and the rover kind of drifting together again well again just drifting them drifting together without any input which is really weird and not really something I understand and I really do think this is something that KSP2 should improve upon and that is the stability less buggy less annoying and less inconsistencies anyways on to <clears throat> one other very important um, payload or activity we brought down with the um, helicopter to the surface of Ty um, Ty Ty but not Tyler lathe is um, a bunch of small parts that we can use using the KSP 1.11 um, engineering summary assembly acquired um, new mechanic 
So that's why we brought an engineer with us. So I brought a small little probe core, a few um, panels, and all of the science experiments um, that can be run on the surface of a lathe, except the science junior because it's just too big. And we can now construct a small little well, surface outpost, actually, like the surface out, um, outposts that were added in the Breaking Ground DLC. Pretty much the same idea of small little surface outpost, but this time as a like permanent or real cubed structure from, like I said, those three panels and all the science experiments. So, and of course, we have a probe core a solar panel and an antenna in order to communicate with the relay network in um, lathe orbit and communicate back to the um, KSC to transmit this data. Obviously we are in a sandbox so we do not need the data but I do think this is a rather interesting cool um, idea and something that you can really use you just bring, in, bring along all the experiments and then you can have a small little surface outpost. And with that, we can now send our engineer back to the, um, to board actually, the refueling rover, since his job, or her job, is now done to assemble this small little surface outpost. And I hope you have enjoyed today's video with this rather large assembly of different crafts around on the surface of Lathe. And hope to see you guys around in the next video. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, Spaceship signing out.